Hi everyone, I thought I'd just do a quick video about the iFi Audio Zen Stream that was released just a couple of weeks ago into the UK market. We've had a number of calls with respect to getting these units configured and set up and also some of the potential hazards that can come with um, falsely resetting the device and in some cases bricking it. What I thought I'd do is just walk you through the requirements for the setup process. Just walk you through what to do, what you'll see and what should be the standard process. My name's Lee and I'm from Yorkshire AV. We're an iFi Audio authorised retailer. We carry stock of these in store and they can be purchased online through our website at yorkshireav.co.uk. Now the iFi Audio Zen Stream is the latest product within their Zen portfolio. Here at the bottom we have the Zen Can, above that we have the new Zen DAC V2 and obviously on top is the Zen Stream. The Zen Stream is a high resolution MQA authorised um, streaming device which connects either via wireless or wired network to your environment and allows you to stream high resolution 24 bit plus 192 kilohertz uh, playback using things such as Tidal Connect, uh, network attached adapter, DLNA if you've got your own music library, um, Rune support as well, it's Rune, Rune certified, a really, really capable device for £399. But that said, the setup process, like most of the devices in the market at this range, can be a little bit tricky. First thing to note, on the back of the device, you've got this little bottom on the, uh, button on the left-hand side, exclusive modes, one through five. One through uh, one being the all-in-one mode, where that is the general mode, which will give most generic playback from different sources. You then have obviously a rune dedicated mo mode. You've got the tidal dedicated mode, network attached adapter mode, and last but not least, DLNA. iFi Audio's website has got a really good description about why you would use different mode in different environments. I definitely recommend you checking that out. This video is more around the setup process, some of the quirks that we've had reported and what those workarounds are. Now you need to decide, are you going down the very easy, very simple ethernet, in which case plug into your network, turn the device on and enjoy streaming. As simple as that. Um, once the device is connected to the network, it will be seen in your devices as you'd expect um, and you can just simply start streaming music to it. If, however, you're going to connect via wireless, which in our instance here, we've got this in our little headphone demonstration area, it is connected wirelessly and most of our customers to date have gone wireless. This is where sometimes the actual issues can start. So, what to do? First and foremost, make sure the exclusive mode is set to 1. If it's not set to one, you will not have access to the web GUI and therefore you cannot connect this to your own Wi-Fi environment. That has been probably number one challenge uh, that our customers have been facing. So make sure the device is set to exclusive mode one. That permits you access to the GUI. The second point to note is when you turn the device on, mine's currently connected to the network, which is why a Above the internet globe here, we've got a, a white light, which means high speed connectivity. When you first turn the device on, that's going to be red, which would indicate no connection to the internet. The first thing you're going to do is hold down this right configuration button for about two seconds. When you do that, the little light is going to start to flash, and that's exactly what we'd expect it to do. In doing so, it's obviously broadcasting its own SSID, the, obviously the network connection light has now gone to red and that means we've got no connection here whatsoever. What you'll see in your wireless connections, and you're going to have to excuse my broken phone here, the joys of a two-year-old, you're going to see iFi Streamer. If you connect to the iFi Streamer, what you'll then see is that the blinking LED stops once a host is connected. What you now need to do is open up a web browser and head to 192.168.211.1 and that will effectively give you the iFi Audio GUI. Now because mine's already been configured once, I get a slightly different screen initially, 
But what you can do in here is basically set up um, the actual connection to your network. So what you'll normally see by default is this screen. All you have to do is select your particular Wi-Fi network. So in this case, Yorkshire AV demo. You enter your password and you press connect. Once you've pressed connect, the next thing you have to do is give the device 30 seconds. Your phone will then reconnect to your original Wi-Fi. If you hold down the right hand button for just a couple of seconds, it'll now turn off the actual host mode and it'll now start and reconnect back to the network that you've just configured. That's really important. Now this normally takes about 30 seconds um, to reconnect to the network as, it's, uh, as you've configured it, and it will now go white. That tells us we've got wireless connectivity and internet connectivity to the device itself. And subject to the color of the actual LED here will tell us both the throughput capability slash the connectivity speed. So white is what you're looking for. That ultimately means strong connection, fast connection. If you get blue or you have green, then you need to have a look at either moving the device, changing the actual wireless broadcast signal um, from your actual router, uh, a whole range of things. If you go down the wired ethernet route, this will happen by default. It'll go white as soon as it gets network connectivity. So with wired network, there's no need to go into any setup modes whatsoever. Now, once you have got this to this stage in your streaming software, so I'm going to go to Tidal here. And again, my exclusive mode is here set to all in one. You know, I'm not using anything special here. I'm not using a Tidal exclusive mode. If I look at my, um, my actual sources now on Tidal, you'll see iFi Streamer. So if I select iFi Streamer and then start some music playback, what you will see, um, again, I've got nothing to to the output here, the light has now gone green. It's now seeing a particular stream um, output and it's seeing it at a particular kilohertz. So we're seeing here, obviously, a high resolution, thus it's green stream coming in. And because we're using Tidal Connect, the device itself is now connecting out to the Tidal platform and managing the stream. My phone is simply a remote control. If I were to stop the stream and just go and play back to my phone, then what you'll see is the light obviously goes out. Really, really straightforward in that respect to use. Um, no issues there whatsoever. Now, some of the issues that customers have seen, like I say, if you've got the switch not set to exclusive mode to all in one, you'll come to the setup, you'll connect to the device, but you will not be able to access the web page hosted at 192.168.211.1. That's one of the first issues. The second issue is the wireless password's incorrect. So you've pressed connect to a network, you've come out of, um, of the actual configuration, you've held down the button for two seconds, and the device is not connected to the network. You end up with a red light. Just go back and restart the setup process, not a problem. Now, if you want to reset the device, as it stands right now, the short reset on the standard firmware as it ships is broken. Don't use the short reset. The short reset is to reset the GUI. If you're gonna do a factory reset, do a long reset. And with that, you'll get a small, uh, a small pin, small screw, anything whatsoever. With the device powered on, holding the reset button for up to six seconds, the lights will go green and red on the right and left hand side. Then it'll start to boot back up again. At that point, you can release the pressure on the reset switch. That will do a full reset, including wireless and GUI reset. But again, make sure you're in exclusive mode one before you do this. I did get a notification yesterday to say iFi Audio has released a new firmware that sorts out a couple of little glitches, including the soft reset brick. So I strongly recommend you download the software, power the device up, connect a USB-C adapter to your computer, Follow the online instructions in terms of how to update the software itself. And with that, you can then do short resets, which is reset the wireless without doing a whole reset of the device itself. Um, something which obviously will bring much joy to people um, if they move the device around quite a bit. Just a little point as well. The USB outputs on here, um, we've got 5 volts, 900 milliamp output. The Zen DAC V2 is perfectly suited 
to run and be powered by the main power supply into the Zen stream. So what we have is a single power supply into the top of the Zen stream. We've then got USB audio out, which then feeds the DAC. The DAC obviously has got no power supply in here whatsoever, but it is getting its power from USB. It's then sending the signal out in this case via RCA into my Zen can, my headphone amplifier. And you'll note as well on the back, we've got the actual DAC set to fixed. So therefore the volume button does nothing and controlling the gain manually in the volume within the actual Zen can itself. So when you've got these little ecosystems, really, really straightforward to, to connect everything together. It does come with the appropriate cables out of the box. It does come with a small ethernet cable. It does come with a small screwdriver, which allows you to change the mode. Altogether, very, very straightforward. But I just thought this video may help some of you out if you've been having some of the difficulties around setup. Hopefully that helps you get online and get streaming your music. Again, yorkshireav.co.uk, we're an IFA authorised dealer. Got a great store here, lots to see and lots to play with. Come and give us a visit. Thank you. Yeah.